Sailors or seamen, what's something you've witnessed that you would catalog as a supernatural or unusual event? Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. Yeah, I have a story that's not so much supernatural as it is just weird. I was working on a ship late one night while it was in port. Just doing typical office work, but on a ship instead of a cubicle. The room I was in was square and fairly spacious for a ship. I was up against one of the walls of the room, and on the far wall from me was a setup of other desks and chairs for other people. Above these desks was a regular old office clock. Anywho I'm sitting there late one night, Microsoft excelling my heart out, the only one in that office that night, when all of a sudden, I just hear slam. I shat my heart out and spun around, scanning the room for nothing. The door to the room is firmly shut, I'm the only one in the room. I look down. The clock that is normally on the far wall, a good 30 feet away from me, is on the ground, about 3 feet directly behind me. I immediately assume someone is messing with me, as we often did, so as my heart rate slowed to 150 BPM, I checked out the clock. It clearly had not been tampered with. The wall hadn't been messed with either, as far as I could tell. I start radioing out to others. Only other people I knew to be on the ship were off on other levels. I don't believe in the supernatural too much, but for the life of me, I cannot explain how that clock got from the far wall to directly behind me on the floor with only one loud bang. Grandad was a chief in the Navy, Dad is a merchant marine, and I'm a sailor right after my first tour. Me and Grandad are both medical, so we have some ghost stories. One of his stories was a case of mass somnambulism, sleepwalking, on the USS Roosevelt that he documented but was never publicly addressed or explained back in the 1960s. Sleepwalking is dangerous not only because of the risks of injury but also because of the implications of underlying issues like night seizures or sleep apnea. A few dozen people sleepwalking a month is not unheard of on a carrier, but apparently in a three-month period, there were over 400 individual cases from over 100 sailors, from lower enlisted to senior officers, that were reported independently. These people came from all over the country, and he said he couldn't find any link to them. He was tasked with recording but was never briefed on why it was happening, what caused it, or why it stopped. It was just dropped. Our speculation is drugs or government testing, but we'll never know for sure. That's one of my granddad's stories. One of mine was on a small boy, a smaller ship, that was getting rough turbulence while underway in the Pacific. I swear we went into some kind of Bermuda Triangle stuff because we got into this super calm part. I'm assuming the eye or some stuff, I'm not a meteorologist, and it felt like an out-of-body experience. The world paused, and everything kinda became quiet and ringing like tinnitus for what felt like at least half an hour. And then suddenly it all came flooding back, like being forced back into my body and being aware. It was still calm at that point, and we'd only felt the calm for maybe a few minutes, but I talked to some of my guys afterwards, and they felt something similar. At the calm point, some said they felt high, I wouldn't know about it. One of our lieutenants said he felt like he passed out and woke up like he was sleepwalking. It was a surreal shared experience. Doc on the ship, our corpsman chief, said it was probably some pressure drop that made us feel disoriented, but we still joke that we all got abducted for a minute and returned. My father was a young teen during World War II. He lived in northern Norway, and my grandfather had a fishing vessel. Fishing under German occupation was very strict, and they often had to work with no additional lights because of fear of being caught. But once they got far enough out into the ocean, the stars and moon would be more than enough to work by. My father was a very scientific and non-religious man until the very day he died. He saw loads of cool stuff, but was very careful to explain to us how the water tricks your eyes. Like how sometimes you could be tricked into seeing mermaids or that the whale was much much bigger than it really was, hence the stories of giant creatures, etc. But he saw something that he couldn't explain, like the hovering lights that would silently appear, hover in the sky, and sometimes fly around the ship. Like how a drone would nowadays, but from many meters away, always silent. And he said a few times that when the moon was big enough, the thing looked flat and round. No way was this a contemporary aircraft at the time. And it wasn't until he moved to the US many decades later that he saw the typical UFO or flying saucer thing and said that was exactly what he saw. There were many occurrences of seeing people work on the ship who weren't really there. 
he would see someone working in the corner of his eye, turn to get a better look at them, think it's one of the other sailors, continue working some more, and next time he looks up, they are gone, and none of the others had been in that area of the ship. Once, there was a really bad storm, and they had all tied themselves to the masts of the ship. He could feel the rope loosening around his waist, and there was more room between him and the mast. He tried to retighten it, but there was so much cold water bombarding him that his hands didn't work fast enough. He said he remembered thinking, I am going to die now, but then someone appeared in front of him, a tall man, wide-shouldered, but my dad couldn't see his face. The man retied my father to the mast. The man had no rope attached to him. The knot was tightened just before a huge wave came and took the man away. My father thought one of his colleagues had been thrown overboard and started shouting, but they couldn't hear each other because of how loud the waves were. When the storm started to die down, he just kept shouting, man overboard. They all started doing a body count, and everyone was accounted for. He talked to my grandfather about it in private afterwards, and my grandfather replied that sometimes the spirit of a dead sailor or fisherman shows up to help out. Sometimes it's to recoil the rope, sometimes it's to save their lives. And then he proceeded to tell my father a few of his own stories. My dad never forgot this incident because everything else could be explained by him being overworked, seeing things, mind playing tricks on you, etc., but there was no doubt that someone or something had tightened him to the mast during that storm. Ropes just don't retighten themselves. Do you ever get the feeling someone is watching you? Possibly following you where no one else should be? A few days out of Anchorage heading south, we hit some nasty weather, including Beaufort Force 11 level stuff. The fire alarm kept going off in the portside passage way up by hold number 3, an AB had already silenced or disconnected it during the 4 to 8. It's common to get false alarms in bad weather, the mate briefed me on it before my watch. It was my hitch as a full third, so I put it down for some easy OT work later in the day instead of some other BS the mate would have me chasing down. As a third, you are a safety officer and work or check on lifeboats, fire extinguishers, give out band-aids, etc. Tankers are built longitudinally, so they flex with the waves, and walking down that passageway as the deck rolled with the waves, I could see it bending as I went from hatch to hatch in every hold. I kept hearing someone whisper around me. Out of the corner of my eyes, I felt like I just missed seeing something. Every hatch I closed, I started to do double takes, looking for something or someone. Do you ever look back down the stairs on your way to bed? Into the darkness below because you swear there's something there, right behind you. I couldn't shake that feeling and radio to the bridge to see if anyone was around me doing work, but nothing. Topside was secured because of the weather, and the boss and OS's were at lunch. I was alone and starting to panic. I couldn't tell if I was expecting to hear the whispers more, so I imagined them, and something kept darting just out of the corner of my sight. I couldn't take it anymore. I screamed out, I know you're there. Enough with your sneaking around and coming out already, I'm done with this. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a shadow again and threw my flashlight as hard as I could at it. Still, there was nothing there. In my head, I thought, I don't care, I'm out, time for lunch, so I basically sprinted from hatch to hatch until I got back to the crew quarters. I could feel my heart in every fingertip the entire time, and I thought I was going to get attacked from behind. I collected myself as I got to the crew mess. I went to the head to check if I had scared myself or if it was just swamp ass from sprinting in fear of my life. When I was washing my hands, I noticed some glue or sticky thing on the side of my hand that wasn't coming off. Then it hit me like a ton of bricks. My ab on watch with me was starting to get sick, so I grabbed the scopolamine patches we had. When I took one out of the wrapper, the ship rolled a bit, and I don't have a free hand. I stumbled and stuck it in my hand. I had peeled it off, but some was still on me. You are not supposed to stick them anywhere but behind your ears because they will enter your bloodstream too fast. Also, one of the side effects is hallucinations. It was a relief to realize that, and it was also terrifying that my mind was affected that way. So this is one part today I f up, one part seeing some crazy stuff and absolutely losing my mind because I didn't wash my hands. This is going to be intentionally vague to avoid saying anything classified. I was on a submarine. Near the end of the underway, I was in the galley helping out because I was bored, my normal department is engineering. One of the sonar techs comes running down to the galley to show me a piece of paper. 
one of the sonar instruments gives a visualization of the data it collects, again, intentionally vague. It had drawn a picture of my face. I have no idea how. But it was very clearly my face, my face is distinct. I have no explanation, and there were no real consequences, but to me, that makes it creepier. Just the ocean making noises that render out my face. No big deal. I was on a barkentine sailing vessel a few years back, off the coast of Puerto Rico, in the middle of a nasty storm. We were dousing our sails when things began to look calm for a second. People were going to rack out when we heard a meaty smack against the side of the ship. Somebody had fallen from the rigging and hit their leg on the gunwale, then into the water. Swells were only 5 to 7 feet, but well enough to conceal a man overboard. The night was pitch black, except for on occasion there was this bright blue lighting. Every few minutes, it would give just enough illumination to see past the rain and wind. It was so hard to see where this guy was even with binoculars, man overboard modules, or whatever else we could throw that floats and lights up. An emergency small boat was sent out to bring him in but couldn't find him. As 12 minutes had passed without laying eyes on him, it wasn't looking good. Just a split second later, the lighting gives off the biggest spark and crack of thunder all night. The whole area was lit like a floodlight was shining right above us, and there was our missing man. When the light was gone, the boat and the man overboard called out to each other. He got out of the water safely. I don't know if the incident qualifies as supernatural or divine intervention, but without that final burst of lighting, we would never have found our man out there. The night could have ended a lot grimmer, but he left that disaster with only a broken femur. Still, I think it's amazing that the man tread water with a broken leg for 12 minutes in the middle of a storm. I'll never forget that. One night, very late, 3.30 am or so, near the end of my bridge watch shift in the middle of the Indian Ocean while serving on a Navy destroyer, I witnessed an absolutely surreal, mesmerizing, and powerfully moving bioluminescence display and its behavior and interaction in a wild electrical storm. I was already familiar with bioluminescence a bit prior to this, having been stationed in San Diego before this deployment and seeing a few small but still incredibly cool instances of it right near the beaches in my neighborhood there. But this particular occasion on this deployment was something I had never imagined was possible. It was a blazing hot, muggy night out there and pitch black, the air was so thick with humidity that no starlight or moonlight came through it, and we were at least a thousand miles off any coastline. The only light that punctured that, sometimes disorienting, endless dark horizon were occasional flashes of lightning way off in the distance from some growing thunderstorms. Nothing unusual yet, a pretty standard night watch for that remote part of the world. Over the course of about 20 to 30 minutes, we had moved much closer to the cluster of storms, and the lightning was getting much more intense and vivid. I went out on the bridge wing with a couple of the other sailors on the bridge team to watch what was now pretty quickly becoming a highly unusual frequency of lightning and deep heavy crashing of thunder. And that's when we started noticing what was happening on the surface of the water. While still a considerable distance off out in front of us, general direction of the ship's heading, we saw bolt after bolt of lightning, at various distances but mostly within seconds of each other, actually striking the surface of the water and causing a whitish glow to emanate in the area where it made contact. I've seen quite a few heavy storms way out in the middle of nowhere on the ocean, but I can't recall ever seeing the lightning actually making contact with the water like that. That alone was breathtaking and bizarre to witness. A few minutes of this went by, and then the real show began. The lightning became slightly less frequent, but the individual bolts seemed to be more powerful. And from the area on the surface of the water where they made contact, we began seeing these pulsating, rhythmic, dazzling areas of neon blue and green bioluminescence rapidly radiating out in circular patterns and continuing out over great distances. Like a ripple effect when you throw a rock into a calm lake or a chain reaction in combustion. All of us on the bridge were just spellbound. I almost couldn't believe what I was seeing, except that there were half a dozen other witnesses up there with me seeing and confirming the same thing. It felt cosmic. It's like everything was completely electrified. The air, the ocean, in between the chest rattling booms of thunder, you could almost even hear a buzzing or crackling all around, like you hear sometimes around down power wires or something. We were radioing down to various other watches inside the ship, trying to get them to rotate up here when they could come see too, because honestly, no description could have really done it justice. This only lasted a few more minutes though, 
before the lightning stopped striking the ocean surface and went back to only bouncing and forking up in the clouds again, with the pulses of bioluminescence fading with it. That happened almost 10 years ago now, but I can still see and hear those incredible minutes very clearly when I think about it again. What an experience. I am not exactly a person who spent most of his life at sea, but during the summer, I used to go sailing with my father. We have a friend who owns a boat, which really just helped us out a bunch. During those expeditions, I have seen many things, but all of them were easy to explain, for example, a blurry creature somewhere around the boat was just me using way more imagination than needed and turned out to be a net. Except for this thing. It was pretty cold this day. I remember that I had to wear my jacket to stay cold. We were just kind of cruising around some island, the island might be too much, a small piece of ground with like four trees and a bunch of bushes. I sat on the side of the boat and just watched the sky. It was a beautiful sunset. As the sun went down, it soon became relatively colder, and my dad said we had to go back. I agreed and started to help him get the anchor back on the boat. As soon as we ended, I noticed that one of the stars was just circling around. It was a very smooth movement, definitely not a helicopter, and I doubt it could be a plane. I told my father that there is a light source just moving in circles, hoping he would explain this. He didn't, he sat there, looking at the sky and slowly turning his head towards me. He said we needed to go. As soon as we returned to the harbor, I started asking him what that was, but he didn't answer a single time. Up to this day, eight years later, he doesn't want to talk about it. Sure, it might be anything, but the curiosity will never end. I will preface this by saying this may not exactly be the answer you're looking for, but my dad was a fisherman, and this happened when I was about 10 years old. My dad was out on a long fishing trip, it was not unusual for him to leave for weeks on end when it was a good season. That season was particularly good, so he was out a lot. My parents used to have nightly phone calls, so one night, my dad didn't answer, which was not unusual. Again, nighttime can be a better time to fish. That night, my mom was having run-of-the-mill dreams. And then she wakes up in a sweat and calls my dad. My dad answers, and he says, you will not believe what just happened. My mom, half-joking, answers, you found the dead body of a man who died at sea. My dad went quiet and then said, how did you know? It turns out that's what my mom had dreamt about, and it was as if she were there, she perfectly described the scene, and both of my parents were really freaked out. They had to end the fishing trip early because some of the guys were in pretty bad shape, the man was older, but it seems he fell off his boat or something, and he got hit with a propeller, so it was a gnarly scene. I was delivering a sailboat down the east coast of the United States, and while we were about 70 miles east of Brunswick, Georgia, at about 1 a.m., the other person on watch and I both saw some very strange lights. They were four bright orange lights that appeared due east of us, farther offshore, in the sky at an angle of about 20 degrees compared to the horizon, fairly low in the sky but far too high to be the lights of a ship. There was nothing on the radar or the AIS. The four lights were extremely bright and orange, and they appeared out of nowhere and hovered in a horizontal line, with the spacing between them approximately triple the width of the lights. They hovered in a line like that for about three minutes, then slowly combined into one, it took about 20 seconds. After combining into one light, they hovered there in place for about another minute, then moved almost instantly to the left, north, a short distance. The acceleration and deceleration were almost instantaneous. It hovered in its new position for a few seconds, then sped off to the right, south, and disappeared. Again, the acceleration was instant, and the speed was faster than anything I have ever seen before. I have no idea what it was I saw, and I would have thought I imagined it, but the other crew member on watch saw it too and described it the same way as me, so I am certain I saw something. I was on night watch on the stern of my dad's Tiana 37 feet sailboat around 1 am when I was about 16 years old. There wasn't a single cloud in the sky, and there was zero light pollution as we were a few miles from shore, so the moon lit everything up to the point where you had no trouble seeing anything around you. I liked to watch the white caps as we cruised along and imagine they were fins coming up out of the water. As we went, it began to look like there were actually fins breaking the waves, and just as I started to think my eyes were playing tricks on me, we hit a patch of phosphorescent algae in the water, and a rainbow explosion of light erupted below us, revealing a pod of probably 30 dolphins. 
Diving back and forth under the boat, they would leave a trail of multicolored light behind them. Within only a few seconds, we were out of the algae, and everything went back to darkness below us, but I could still hear the dolphin sloshing back and forth. For years, I thought I had fallen asleep and dreamed it, but my dad remembers it happening. It's truly one of the most magical natural occurrences I'll ever have the pleasure of witnessing.